everybody. Give it up for your half Jewish host. I love half of him. This is great. This is wonderful. We're all wearing pants for the first time since March. This is wonderful. Oh, I can't wait for this whole pandemic to end. I'm telling you what. I saw somebody in the casino on my way in here who had googly eyes attached to their mask. Yeah, I'm not ready for acid flashbacks right now, okay? Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here despite the fact that I'm dressed like an eighth grade math teacher who's going through a divorce. Look at me, I look like I've been sleeping on the couch in the student in, in, this, in the teacher's lounge for a week, right? Like, I'm dressed like the, the, the teacher who's trying too hard to be cool to the students. Like, no kids, I can't take money from you and buy you beer. I'll just have to pay for it myself. I love performing here because I love this. I love this brick background. I always, I'm always worried about doing comedy. Uh, and I wonder, all right, so this is what it is. I, sometimes I do comedy in places like a VFW hall or like a Knights of Columbus, or for whatever, for some reason there's an American flag on the background of the stage. And I'm always worried about doing comedy in front of an American flag. Because if you see me standing in front of an American flag, shouting into a microphone, <laughs> with this haircut, I look like Breitbart stock photos. I look like a background actor from American History X. I look like a guy whose sole income comes from giving unsolicited speeches on why we should keep Confederate monuments. <laughs> I look like a racist. I'm terrified. Every moment of my life is trying to convince people that this is a genetic defect, not a political statement. <laughs> I'm constantly worried about my appearance. It's not in a vain way. I don't care. I'm always worried about how other people are going to perceive how I look. Example, I do acting. I live in Boston, so occasionally I do some acting and stuff, right? Right? I got called in to read for a commercial for a local Boston area uh, hospital. They asked me to come and do the commercial. They called me and said, hey, we want you to come and read for the role of doctor. Then after I showed up, they was like, hey, maybe you also want to read for the role of heart patient, too. <laughs> do you understand? I'm too dumb to go to medical school now, too fat to pretend to be a doctor. <laughs> Nobody wants to take fake medical advice from a guy who needs real medical advice. <laughs> It's confusing, that's baffling to me, because in the year 2018, in three different movies and TV shows, I was cast as a jogger. <laughs> Alright, your laughter's appropriate and hurtful, okay? <laughs> First thing I got cast in a, 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 as a jogger in uh, was in February 2018. It was a TV show, it was a pilot for CBS. And what happened to the scene is that the main character is just running along the Charles Rivers with his dog. He gets a phone call, he stops, he takes a phone call, we all run past him, he hangs up the call, and the scene. By the way, you know how embarrassing it is that you recognize a dog because he has better IMDB credits than you do? <laughs> we do one take, I run past him, everything goes good, they call cut, they're like, all right, great job, Dennis, wonderful, go ahead, you're done for the day, hit the food truck, we're gonna pay you for the whole eight hours, you're done, you don't have to do any more running. I'm like, did you fire the only fat guy on set first? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like I, Look, we don't have the insurance, okay? <laughs> Here's what bothered me about it, by the way. After they called cut, all the other actors who were protecting the joggers ran back to their first position, their original position, faster than they ran on screen. I'm like, this is a soon-to-be failed CBS pilot, not the Boston Marathons. Knock it off, brown nosers. <laughs> I got to drive my car here. I got to drive my car for the first time in uh, nine months. I don't know. It was great. It was wonderful. By the way, if you want to know which car is mine, go into the parking garage and look for the car you think you can pick up and toss. It is a tiny car for a tiny man. Ladies. <laughs> I love my car. First thing I did when I bought this car is I uh, was driving down uh, the road and first thing I did is I put on a song called Superstition by Stevie Wonder. You guys know this song? Yeah, yeah great song, funky song, a lot of praise. I love it. I'm driving down the road and I got the windows rolled down, the volume cranked up, and I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs. Right, let me rephrase that, sorry. I'm driving down the street, street singing at the top of my lungs because it's weird if I'm driving down the street just going, ah! <laughs> singing at the top of my lungs. I pull up to a red light, cop car pulls up next and he starts rolling down his window and I look and I'm like, oh, sorry, officer. And I turn on the volume. That's when he looked at me and went, you don't know shit about Stevie Wonder. <laughs> he then turned up Superstition by Stevie Wonder on his own radio. <laughs> Peeled wheels and then drove away through the red light. Do you understand the only thing more badass that cop could have done in that moment was just pop off caps as he drove away. <laughs> 
Speaking of driving away, I've been dead at Dance Fire. Thank you guys very much. Good night. Thank you for being here.